How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Happy New Year. You are logged on to the Arts Reporter, your Arts Reporter at MimiJohnson.net. We focus on arts, entertainment, entrepreneurs, and inspirational life stories. Every Wednesday, it goes down right here. Ow! We had a we had a, a, a two week vacation, um, but that was just you know for airing. Of course, we're always working because the behind the scenes is a lot of work, which I love. Um, I got to wow! Just it's so much. That's going on in 2014. Just genius. Um, a lot of love. Um, a lot of budgets. Um, I'm really, really happy about the sibling sitcom. For those of you that have not gone to YouTube, go check out the sibling sitcom where I play Mimi Williams, a starving artist. Um, and, I, you know, all I can say is, is that, wow, I bought in the new year with a bang. I bought in the new year with my family, bought in the new year with new projects, new contracts. So I'm really excited. And I just wanted to thank everybody, especially our advertisers that, you know, understand branding, you understand um, how to increase your profile. And I'm really, really like looking forward to helping a lot of businesses, artists um, to market and brand and promote themselves so we can get y'all some sales and make some money. This is a going to be a great financial year for everyone. Um, so everybody stay on your grind, handle your business for all of my teens and my kids out there. Mimi Johnson loves you. Stay in school, get good grades, do your thing. Um, so look, we're going to go to a very short commercial break. I gotta, I gotta get, get y'all to see the siblings, <laughs> the, the bumpers. And then, so we'll be right back. We have some performing artists that you are going to totally enjoy. I enjoy, we have two performing artists today. So I'm giving y'all a little extra entertainment today. So we'll be right back right after these messages. You're logged on to MimiJohnson.net, the arts reporter, your arts reporter, where we focus on arts, entertainment, entrepreneurs, and inspirational life stories. We'll be right back. Meet the Williams family, the matriarch, Tyra. Hello, world. The baby, Mimi. Tyra. Hey, world! <laughs> the siblings sitcom. Meet the Williams family. Meet the baby, Mimi. Hey, world! Meet Junior. Hello, world. Hey, Junior. Hey, Mimi. <laughs> Meet Vanessa. Hi, Mimi. Hey, Junior. Hey, hey Vanessa. Ha, <laughs> ha. She's having a vision. The Siblings Sitcom. Oh, hi, world. going on with you d jones is What's in the house on, Chica? hey you know me i'm doing my thing handling my business um loving being 48 i just had a birthday okay so i'm loving that i was at the party I remember you that. were yeah, yeah you and your uh, family came thank yeah, you so that much that, was that fun, cake yeah. was good right yeah, it was. It was chocolate cake and yeah. yellow chocolate um yeah, we had a good time we yeah. did we enjoyed time. ourselves um one of my sons bought some um refreshments so we were able to the drink and I I made some food and Steve Moore made some food as well. Yeah. So you know, yeah, we had a if great time. There, it. That's a, it yeah. Was it was well, forty nine yeah. will be here before you know yeah, it, so they'll yeah. get a chance to come hang out with us again. You're still looking good. Look at you. Thank you so Look much. You. Well, you know, um, I'll tell y'all my secrets later. <laughs> What's going What's on? How you doing? I'm doing pretty good, man. I'm on the show. Yeah, you're on Fame 15. Uh, I brought some props. You're going to jump right into With, that. Yeah, well, Fame 15. But you're a on, part of that, yeah. But, but you're on The Arts Reporter. Finally, exactly. we got yeah. you on. Yeah. But, um... Wow, Fame 15. It's it's you and I and um, about 10 other uh, 
talents. Yeah. We're all actors, actors, so talented yeah. for Fame 15. Mark yeah. Squared is holding it down with the production. I'm excited. Man. Yeah, yeah. January and 29th. January 29th. Coming at you, yeah. Um, and so just log on to myfame15.com. So where are you from? I'm originally from Texas. Where? Temple, Texas. Okay. Yeah. And kind of a small town, but I was a military child, so in case y'all wondering how I got way over here, yeah, my dad was military, and uh, so I've been traveling most of my life since probably since I was like six. Okay, so I've been traveling all my life, and uh, I just ended up over here. My dad actually retired here, and then they just moved back to Texas mm -hmm. maybe three or four years ago, and I stayed here, you know, trying to pursue that American dream, you know, trying that music thing. Well, you know, I'm not gonna start trying anymore. I forgot because I just saw somebody on Facebook just said, do it. Don't try Don't it. Don't so try. I'm pursuing my dream. There I'm already doing it. So, you know, and promoting my CD. Yes. You know, my album here, Swag Soul, y'all. So Where can I they buy that on the side. Mm -hmm. Where can they um, buy the CD? One of the one of the many places you can get this uh, online. You can get it at CD Baby. Mm -hmm. um, you can get it at um, Amazon. Um, and pretty much anywhere online. Uh, okay. If you just Google my name online, just D Jones with a Z. It's D dot dot or space or space it comes Jones up either way. with a with a, with Z. a Z. Yeah, J O N E Z, and uh, just put that in, and it'll come up. Um, I also have this physical copy at uh in Riverdale, this place called um, it's a Junior's, I think Junior's Music Shop or something okay. like that in Riverdale. He has it in his store, and I have it in another store in College Park. Okay. You know, it's just, it's one of the, I think it's the only music store out there. Yeah, you know, yeah. In the, in the neighborhood, so. All I right. I've got in a couple of stores out there, so I'm pretty happy about it. And they also can digitally download. Of course, which yeah, is Which yeah. is always the best way to yeah, go. Yeah, CD Baby, Amazon, uh -huh. like I said, or just, you know, Google my name, and it'll, I think I'm on at least, from what I can remember, like 30 different sites where you can either sample my music or purchase it. So. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them I can't remember right now because they come up with well, yeah, so many different sites. It's too much to remember. To yeah, that's and why I write down I do everything. Myself, so <laughs> I don't remember every place yeah, that I put it on because yeah. I'm, I'm constantly trying to promote this and, you know. Trying? And We're going to get rid of that word. I'm constantly promoting this. I'm yeah. not trying. I am doing it. Y'all, swag soul. Remember that. <laughs> swag but, uh, soul. Yeah, so I'm just promoting that all the time, man. So... All and right. trying to do this, you know, this Fame 15 trying. stuff. So doing the Fame 15 stuff. You yeah. You're going to get me on track. I am. Me. I'm going to stop saying I trying. I am. I know you minute. are. <laughs> Let me get warmed up, y'all. I'm going to stop saying trying in a minute. I'm still getting warmed uh, up. You know? So look, how long yeah. have you, or do you write your own songs? I do write. Um, okay. I write my own, um, my music. I arrange it. Mm -hmm. um, and just because I'm impatient with... Um, how people procrastinate so much. I do a lot of my own vocals as well. Yeah. Just because, you know. It's better got, to be your own producer. I gotta get I'm there my and own get producer. It, I got to get in there and get it done. That's so, right. So most of the stuff, um, I say actually all of the material on here is probably all the vocals are me. Okay. And, uh, I arranged everything and wrote everything on here. So check it out, y'all. Okay. So I think, you know, I think it, it's pretty good, you know. How long have you been, you know, like, well, I'm not going to say pursuing your career. Let's start off when you were a kid, because I know I'm like a child prodigy. I've mm -hmm. been on stages all of my life, literally. Like, it's like a drug for me. Like, second if I grade. can't get, I think it was before that. Yeah. But I started in second grade. In though. second grade, yeah. okay. Remember when they used to call it Glee Club? The, yes. Yeah, <laughs> I know I look young, y'all. Ah, yeah, just, the Glee Club, stop I've been it. around for a little while. You know, I just drink a lot of water and get on the treadmill. Yeah. But, yeah, I've been been singing probably since the second grade. Mm -hmm. yeah. When did you write your first song? Oh, man, you know what? I started writing poems. Mm -hmm. I guess you could, they could turn into songs. I started writing poems, I think, in the seventh or eighth grade. Okay. When I actually started, like, putting a entire format together yeah and, like, and you know rhyming and everything and yeah like yeah whole, yeah like verses so and how that. old are we in the seventh and eighth grade like 14 um, no 15, i was 13 you know what? i think i was 12 okay 12 yeah i was 12 or 13 and how i wrote my first song is we had to do a project um we had to do any kind of project we wanted in class about anything and i think oh i'm trying to remember right now we just had to write about something that we liked and i wrote a 
six paragraph thing about something that I liked and I got an A plus. Okay. And it was a um I can't remember right now, I'll probably remember it in a minute. But yeah. um, that's when I kinda started getting into the writing process when I wrote in that class and mm-hmm. got an A plus on it and I was like, Hey, this is I must be pretty good. So I started like writing songs and like making up stuff and like writing it on paper uh-huh. and saving it after that. So yeah, the eighth grade is kinda when it seventh or eighth grade is when it like hit me. Good. The bug kind of bit me, yeah. Okay, so um, if you had to um, change anything in your life as far as your music, is there anything that you would change? Oh. You mean as far as on the CD? Or no, as far it? as just from the time just, you knew that you wanted to be a musical artist. Oh, what would I change? Yeah. Or anything that you would fix or anything that you, because Mm. really it's about influence and because we want the advice, you know, that what you've been through. So first, is there anything that you would change? I definitely would have, um, Mm -hmm. I definitely would have gotten more professional advice. Mm Mm-hmm. Had I known I was real serious about this at a younger age, because yeah. you know, like now, there's there's so many different avenues, of course, for people to go to, and there's these different classes and everything that you can go to hone your skills. Yeah, I didn't do any of that coming. Right, out. it was I was just in order for me to get better, it was on me to get better. I didn't, mm-hmm. I never had a, you know, like a vocal coach or acting class. Now later on in high school, I mean, I had I took choir Training. and all that mm-hmm. in school, but if I would change anything, I would probably pursue, uh, like I said more professional services had I known I was going to be in this for the long haul yeah. and try to like really develop it like those uh, like the young stars I don't know if I could mention any names on here like Justin Bieber you know how they started real young and we all parents, we most of us started you really know, and young par- but their parents saw Training. it and honed it right, right. and like really pushed them out there yeah, because, yeah. so it was kind of really just me pursuing this until I got, like I said, into high school and I really wanted to do it as a career. Okay. So I never took the classes and all that stuff that a lot of the kids are taking now. Mm-hmm. So that's, that we took back in the day. Yeah. I've been trained like crazy. Yeah. Like but dance that's like the only and thing I would probably music, um, piano, I would have learned piano. I yeah. was about to say that. I would have learned how to play the piano and did all that. Because mm-hmm. so. that's kind of like my favorite instrument. Yeah. Piano. I just can't play anything, y'all. But, yeah. You know, Maybe you can just, take some lessons. I just attempt to perfect this right here. So, yeah. You know. But that I can't vocal, play any instruments, vocal, unfortunately. You know. The the vocal cords are our instrument. It's a hard, and it's a hard instrument. Yeah. Well, I, you know, well, I don't know. I've perfected it. I'm, I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. You got to keep it warm and keep it trained and all that. Yes. And, you got to know sing from the cracking and all, all that other the time. stuff. Yeah. So yeah. so if you um, had any advice for j- not just old, not just younger people, but older people, too, if you had any advice, what would be some things that you would say to people, you know, regarding um, music wise. You're, you're selling your CD, your your career? Stick with it. That's the main thing I could probably tell you. Stick with it. Mm-hmm. Um, keep honing your craft like we were just saying a few mm-hmm. seconds ago constantly work on your craft and uh you can always get better i don't think there's ever a time when you're going to be as good as you're going to get you can always you be always better. can be better that's right keep on trying keep honing your craft and um if it's if it's for you and you're going to know if it's for you don't stop doing it never stop never quit right yeah that's probably the only advice i could give because that's what i you know that's the mantra that i go by you know Me and too. i know that this is for me, so, you know, I'm never going to stop. Mm-hmm. I think this is what I was called to do, so, you know. Okay. I think I'm supposed to be in in music in some kind of capacity, so, mm-hmm. you know. So you got a song for us. I do. Well, I got a little party jam for y'all. Yeah. I hope y'all dance to it in here. We got to give a shout out real simple. quick to um, Bird. How you doing? And um, let's see, Simply Mo. Hey. And everybody that's watching, these are the our people that are in the chat room. Um, but we have a lot of people that just sit and just watch. They don't go into the chat room. We have to yeah. give them blessings as okay. well. What's up, y'all? But thank you so much for um, tuning in. And, um, yeah, so did, look, Bird will put your Facebook up there and everything. Okay. <laughs> is that me? Right here, yeah, that's oh, you. Oh, got me up there. Bird is, Bird is our, like, number one fan. But what does that say after it the says, CD, uh, baby? 
It says cdbaby.com slash artist slash D Jones 3. Looks like a 3. So I look. Think there's supposed to be a 2 after that. A though. 2, okay. Yeah, well, double check that. He'll put it, I think yeah. it's D Jones 32, and it'll send you straight to the page okay. where you can. Buy my music at. But All yeah, right. I don't know if if it's like cut off. He'll or what, but he'll yeah. he'll get I think it it's though. though. Mm-hmm. So look, we're gonna go to a commercial break and then we're gonna get you set up so you can sing your song. All right. All right. So we'll it's be my ba- party. It's <laughs> that's, we'll, the song. that's the song. We'll be back right after these messages. You're logged on to MimiJohnson.net, the arts reporter, your arts reporter, where we focus on arts, entertainment, entrepreneurs, and inspirational life stories. Be right back. Mwah. It's about to be on D Jones, I got it, y'all now 
brand new swag, brand new flow. Let the Moscato flow. Cause when I come through the front door, all I wanna know is what, what they hitting for. Yeah. But I do wanna hit the dance flow with two or three ladies in tow. Shaking them apple bottoms, man, I think I got them. Hey, feels like it's my birthday, so I'ma celebrate all day. And even if I just two step, man, I'ma do it today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, come on, y'all. Now, putting it down. Yeah, hands down. Yeah. It's crunk up in here I like this DJ style hey. Making the party high The people screaming and singing Woo. Don't stop, don't stop It doesn't matter if it's at a fancy club Or even a hole in the wall As long as they play in my song It don't matter if it's at a fancy club No, no, no Long as they play in my song, it's the oh, down. got my swagger, Ooh, my swagger. Turn it down, hands down, I'ma run this yeah, town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dirty, dirty, ain't nothing but a party. Nothing but a party. Trinity out, that's where we're yeah, right now. fighting for her life. And I have three children that said that you're the one that did it. Well, I'm sorry for the girl that's in intensive care. And the three girls, they're just haters. How do you know that they were girls? I only said children. Well, I don't know what's happening to her. But she's not Davis. I need you to stand up. Turn around, man. Wait, wait a minute. That is my child. If I take her from me, you're hurting her. Ma'am, this is all your fault. You're to blame for this. I blame you. You're a little blind head wannabe. You can't relate to our world. Davis, I'm sorry. Oh, you're sorry, aren't you? Are you sure you weren't just hearing things? Because I have to tell you all the time about watching all those horror flicks. 
Your life is just like one big interesting movie. Always. I don't know. It was probably just a prank. You know you are the new kid on the block. What about the dreams? Well, you are a fighter. And you never let things defeat you, so maybe the dream was a way to remind you of your inner warrior. Put my job on the line for you. You wouldn't have this Mickey Mouse job if it wasn't for me. Nevertheless, I got what you want, and if you want to get it, you're going to have to pay for it. So that's where we at, huh? No honor among thieves. I've stolen files from a federal judge, your wife. So don't talk to me about honor among thieves or anything else. If you want them, so what seems to be the problem here? My problem is with him. And my problem is with her. Okay, well that's not going to get us anywhere. Is there any infidelity? Money missing from the household? Dawn, let's start with you. The evaluation assignment was for you to grade yourself on the work you've done. And you gave yourself an F. What's that about? It's what I feel I deserve. That's all. Do you know what this is? This is... This is a forget you. To me and to the rest of the class. I don't want your excuses. Because I know what you're going to do. All right, that was Shay Mack. She was a, um, she's an, an actress. I don't know what happened with that, um, <laughs> with that video, but Al's going to work on it because we're going to have to run that one again. Up, yeah. How you doing? I'm well, how are you? Good. This is Nubian. Nubian, you are, I, I saw you perform, um, at an event and I was like, wow, you like really inspired me because I like poetry, you know, poetry is cool and everything. Um, you know, but it's not as intense as other artists that I see. I, I don't know what it is, but you intrigued me. Like, Thank I you. really wanted to know, like, Thank all the you. words that were coming out of her mouth. I appreciate you know that. what I'm saying? Yeah. So how long have you been writing? Um, I wrote my first piece in high school, so it's been a little while. Okay. Um, but I went on hiatus. I didn't write anything for years after that. Uh-huh. And um, I picked up maybe about two years ago. Where you from? Atlanta, Georgia. Born and raised. God, yes, we get to meet a Georgia yes, Beach. Absolutely. <laughs> That's really Absolutely. Absolutely. Right, because it's like. Transplants. People, yeah, people <laughs> ask me all the time, well, um, you're not from here. I'm like, me and about 90%. Yeah. yeah. We then came and just took, took over. over. Took, but we still here. Da uh, yeah. We are still yeah. in the building. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, being, you know, being from Atlanta, you're, you know, Southern, uh, Southern Belle. Yes, ma'am. Um, have you traveled to other places? Uh, I have. I've gone on a few family vacations, but as far as living outside of the state, I moved one time. Okay. My best friend, he and I, um, managed for Kodak in New Jersey for about eight months, so. Okay. I've been out just a little bit. So you, you got a taste of the North. Just a little bit. Yeah, that's why you came back. It's too cold. <laughs> it is too cold. Girl, it's too cold. It's too dirty. It's too everything. I wasn't going to air no dirty laundry. Oh, I can't. I'm from the Bronx, so. Okay, okay. Let it be known. I'm down south for a reason. I hear that. Okay, yeah, because um, it's just a better um authentic way of life it's a Good more deal. better quality Good deal. of life for your children as well yeah um being yeah. down south yeah. yeah so um let's talk about you as a kid and um you know did you, how did you come into this artist and being a creative okay well um i first like to start by saying as a kid i was perfect ah. um, <laughs> no <laughs> no but um as a kid i really um kind of play I played basketball I was in the band and yeah. stuff like that I think I played the flute in maybe second grade or something like that but I really didn't pick up on anything uh, middle school I kept doing basketball high school like I said my in 12th grade year I wrote my first poem so okay. I started I started kind of late and I'm still a newbie to the game because I told you I took a long hiatus so you know after that um 
I was feeling kind of void in a sense. So uh, I was in church one night and I was I prayed. I said, Lord, um, I want you to show me my purpose. Mm. And so an uh, opportunity came up and where I could do poetry and that just kind of confirmed it for me. Okay. So. I know Steve got a couple of questions for you. Well, don't feel bad about your hiatus. If you okay. ever notice uh, Stevie Wonder, mm -hmm. he would write an album. And it'd be a smash. And you wouldn't hear anything from Stevie for about five or six years. Yeah. Okay. Then he'd come back with another one, and each track would be a smash. Each, but yeah. What, I mean, what, what inspired you to start writing? Was it a life experience or just putting your thoughts to paper? And uh, uh, For me, I am a criminal justice major. That's your audience. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he, he, he asked me the yeah. question. Don't judge me. Okay, don't judge no, that's me. okay. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm a criminal justice major. Okay. So I've always been interested in uh, the politics and how things work and trying to um, bring recognition to the things that kind of hold us back as African Americans. Yes. And so I've always had a voice for that. And when I found poetry or when, for, when poetry found me, then it was that was all she wrote. So um, I won't box myself in by saying I'm a political poet, but... I'm a political book. Okay, yeah, yeah, because you have a lot to say, and you're going to do a piece for us today. Am, absolutely. What would be, um, you know, something that you would tell poets to inspire people like me to want to hear them? Because I tell you, if I hear one more person talk about always the downside of everything, yeah. like we want to hear some uplifting, right. so, you know, parts of your life as well as a poet what would you advise for as far as far as their writing awareness okay um a little bit of advice um when you do your piece you want to stick true to who you are so if you've gone through a lot then go ahead and tell a lot tell what you've been through but always show the brighter side like what was the light at the end of the tunnel yeah you know I always encourage people and and people draw to that when they know that not only can you feel them that you've gone through some of the things they're going through but give them hope for an expected mm -hmm. end so, that's good yes, yeah end it, end it with a smile mm -hmm. absolutely and i notice a lot of spoken word artists or poets they like to mix poetry with blues mm -hmm. and when you're performing in front of people you know like what she does her, her goal is to get up perform and Everyone leaves there with a smile. Right. That's you know, good stuff. I mean, that, that, that's, uh, that's a good way to, to look at it. Just mix your poetry with happy stuff, even though you might have gone through some downside. But like you said, you always have that light. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. At the end. So, you know, you can see through it. And yeah. when you get to the end, you know, you don't even look back. Hey, that's past. You yeah, know, absolutely. I'm looking forward to something. Else. Absolutely, you about to get me preaching. Old oh, things have passed away, huh? And behold, all things have become yeah. new. Okay, don't get me started. Go ahead, girl. You better <laughs> preach. We all need it. We all need yes, inspiration. Absolutely. You know. And so you have naturally Nubian a sample. Yes, ma'am. So you've got three pieces on your sample. Uh, uh, on your sampler and people can reach you at facebook.com forward slash tiffany naturally nubian yes, okay and is this record for sale it is for sale um but i do want to highlight it is just a sample okay so um i had to i felt an urge on me to put something out there so i put two um two copies of state of mind on there okay one's acapella and one's with an instrumental um, and then I have some information about me on there as well. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I'm new to the game, so I'm still picking up. You know, I'm still picking up things from places yeah. and, and kind of looking for some mentoring and talking and networking with people. So you can find this CD everywhere that I am. Hard copies <laughs> only. <laughs> All over the city, though. I Catch know, me. that's right. Yes, <laughs> Everywhere. So um, do you post where you're performing and, you know, what dates do you have coming Absolutely. up? Okay. Absolutely. Okay, where where can people find that? Um, you can find it on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Again, my name is Tiffany Thompson. The middle part is naturally Nubian. Uh, naturally just describes who I am. My name is Nubian. My stage name is Nubian. Mm -hmm. um, I'm on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I just two weeks Instagram game I'm so happy, I'm so happy. I was late yeah so, you know I feel like I've been inducted into the beloved okay you know? okay so okay I'm happy about that good yeah. and what's the piece you're gonna do for us today um 
it would make sense to do state of mind, but what I'm going to do is encouragement. Okay. That's what I'm going to do. All right. So we're going to come back right after these messages. You're logged on to MimiJohnson.net, the arts reporter, your arts reporter, where we focus on arts, entertainment, entrepreneurs, and inspirational life stories with Nubian and Steve Moore. We'll be right back right after See these messages. Mwah. Carol Davis, I have just a few questions for you, okay? Questions, questions, don't scare me. Release the child, ma'am. There's a little girl in intensive care right now, fighting for her life. And I have three children that said that you're the one that did it. Well, I'm sorry for the girl that's in intensive care. And the three girls, they're just haters. How do you know that they were girls? I only said children. I don't know what's happening to her, but she's not going to do this. I mean, you stand up. Turn around, Wait, wait a minute. That is my child. Do not take her from me. You're yeah. hurting her. Ma'am, you're too hard. This is all your fault. You're to blame for this. I blame you. You're a little blind hair wannabe. You can't relate to our world. Hey, I'm sorry. Oh, you're sorry, are you? Are you sure you weren't just hearing things? So I have to tell you all the time about watching all those horror flicks. Your life is just like one big interesting movie, always. I don't know. It was probably just a prank. You know you are the new kid on the block. What about the dreams? Well, you are a fighter and you never let things defeat you. So maybe the dream was a way to remind you of your inner warrior. Put my job on the line for you. You wouldn't have this Mickey Mouse job if it wasn't for me. Nevertheless, I got what you want. And if you want to get it, you're going to have to pay for it. So that's where we at, huh? No honor among thieves. I've stolen files from a federal judge. Your wife. So don't talk to me about honor amongst thieves or anything else. If you want them, it's going to be... So what seems to be the problem here? My problem is with him. And my problem is with her. Okay, well, that's not going to get us anywhere. Is there any infidelity? Money missing from the household? Dawn, let's start with you. The evaluation assignment was for you to grade yourself on the work you've done. And you gave yourself an F. What's that about? It's what I felt I deserve. That's all. Do you know what this is? This is... This is a forget you to me and to the rest of the class. I don't want your excuses because I know what you're Hello, it's Nubian again, and I'm back with encouragement. They say my ideals are revolutionary, but to most, a revolution is scary. So what is one to do when your heart is literally buried in social injustice unlevy? Racism running rampant like a plague. Overlooked, unmentioned, nothing said. How do you fight for a people who no longer long to be free? Comfortably living lackadaisically. Worse than Katrina, Ike, or Sandy. An ethnic natural disaster on its feet. My thing is, why stop now? Don't even slow down. Just because civil rights got our foot in the door doesn't mean we shouldn't knock it down. So in this case, we've got an inch. Might as well take a mile. Forcibly. There's a force forcing me, a stronger force behind the scene, the force that's already seen, the force it'll take to change the scene. And I'm just optimistic enough to believe, just hopeful enough to dream, got just enough faith to conceive, because it only takes a mustard seed, that all things will work out in the end. The back of my book says that we win, just occupy until then and give minimal assent to coincidence, because... All things happen for a reason. The revelation will come in this season. Just make sure you're prepared to receive it. And 
when people show you who they are, believe them. Beware of Judas is committing high treason for the paper. Turn his back on Jesus, the only mediator between God and man. The one with all power in his hand on him, the solid rock, I stand. When all else is sinking sand, he who had a cross to bear. Forty lashes saved one to his back, which was bare. Blood ran out, water steady leaking, crowned with a wreath of thorns just to mock his kingship. Rejected by his own, they drilled holes in his side. Nailed him to the wood and plucked his beard till he cried. All for you and I. That's why I constantly fight. No one's going to suppress a freedom giving me my birthright. Not talking about this earthly suit, my rebirth is through Christ. You see, it's more than round and, I'm sorry, you see, it's more to it than running around with my fist in the air. Not just the social movement, but I'm spiritually aware. Proud of my heritage and unashamed of the gospel. Just like Peter, sometimes I can get a little hostile, but no one fights with a smile on their face. My motives are right and I'm fighting a good fight of faith. Not to mention I'm saved by grace. Slow start, but I make it to the finish line because I'm running at a steady pace. So live life on purpose and join me in this race. Peace on that one, y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to Mark Square Studios, where we offer great prices and outstanding accommodations in one convenient location. Hot, hot studio. Make sure you do that. Fashion photographers and filmmakers now have an ideal space for professional in-studio shoots. So photographers and filmmakers, sign up now and unbox your Mark Square membership today. Welcome to Mark Square Studios. Fame 15. How you doing? This is Miss Mimi Johnson.net, the Triple Threat. We are here on the set of Fame 15. We're holding it down at Mark Squared with our photographer, C. Reese. Getting ready to bring you guys a fantastic show. So we're looking forward to January 2014. We're here at Mark Square, Main 15. Hi, it's Nicole Ward here at Fame 15, just doing my photo shoot. So excited to be with the beautiful Althea. We just finished Woo! it, killing it. MyFame15.com All right, all right. Hey there. Hello. Shakia Sanders. Mm -hmm. Okay, um from from Hold a Housewife. From Hold a Housewife. Wow. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I just go. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin with that cuz <laughs> a lot of people are like, "Uh, oh, you know, um why you can't never change a a, a hoe oh. into a into a housewife or a stripper into a girlfriend or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be." But little do people know that these are real individual people that got to do what they got to do to I know that's survive. Right. That's the truth. And that's why the book is on the map because I'm proving, you know, and putting a rest that you can turn a hoe into a housewife. <laughs> oh, wow. Let's start back from, let's say, elementary. Work your way. Listen, elementary school, it was kind of hard for me. Um, only due to the fact that I was not able to pursue my dream as an actress and a writer and a singer. And so even though I went to a talented school called Evelyn Graves Christian Academy and they wanted to give me a um, crazy scholarship, my parents only believed in education, education. Okay. You can do that later. There's a whole lot of broke people, <laughs> you know, trying to pursue yes. their dreams of acting and 
and different things like that. So I wasn't able to do what I love to do. Okay. And so I got kind of tangled up in this little web, not really knowing myself because I wasn't allowed to express myself. And so, you know, I, you know, when I was younger, I was, you know, molested and I went through a different, you know, a whole lot of different kind of things. You know, I was a pastor's um, daughter and I always had the spotlight on me as well to do good, don't do bad. And so, you know, with low self-esteem, along with a whole bunch of other things, I started down a path that was crazy when it came to sexual deviation. Okay. And so, How um, old were you? When I first got molested, I actually was around eight years old. I was eight years old when I got molested. And um, then um, starting to be sexually active, it was around 12, 13 years old. Mm. And so um, I always equated the love that I was looking for. And that's why, you know, Women of Deliverance, which I do have um, with my ministry, Cathedral mm -hmm. of Deliverance, um, I teach women how to I transition their minds because the Bible tells us, be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of their minds. And so I renew minds yes. daily by allowing females to understand that love has to come from within, not out. Yes. And so um, I, that, and that's pretty much what the book is about, and that's what my life is about as well. It's not about, um, you know, how many cars you can drive, how many fancy um, things, outfits you can have on, how many weaves you can have going on in your head, you know, how many men can take care of you. It's not about that. It's about loving yourself because usually when you act on those things, it's because you're trying to fulfill a void yes. that is not there. And so the first act to fulfilling the void is first knowing yourself, learning who you are. Yes. And so, um, you know, like I said, it all started for me when I was younger and um, I went through a crazy marriage first marriage um that was abusive um domestic violence and um you know <laughs> i found myself you know not having money not being happy and dealing with so many different things and just selling my body you how know. old were you then i was about um 19 years old when i first okay, got married go ahead. and you know i um i started uh dealing with my ex-husband at that time and i felt as though you know i would get married again to fill the void and not do uh fornication as the pastors and preachers and everybody else say and so you know they say it's better to marry than to burn <laughs> so i you know got married without even questioning is this the person that god literally designed for me right is this the person that is for me and how could i ask that question i couldn't why first because i did not know myself meaning yeah i didn't know myself so i didn't know what questions to ask i didn't know what to look for so again trying to not you know be on the spotlight again and you know fornicating and even though i was already a teen mother at that time my daughter at that time was about four or five years old and so um i just decided well let's get married or whatever and i and i my life just started spiraling downhill from there okay and then so the rock bottom the rock bottom was um basically me ending up with three children out of wedlock mm -hmm. um how what, old are they right now yeah they are 16 i have a 11 year old and then i have a 10 year old and your well. 11 year old and your 10 year old are here yes they are <laughs> oh, she's it's, yeah, they're beautiful. And then <laughs> you have you. a baby baby that yes. you just had. Yes. Gorgeous. Thank you. Okay, okay. So the rock bottom was that you ended up with three, with three children. children. I ended up with three children, um, nowhere to go. Well, the, now that's the blessings, the three that's children. The, but being but a single your situation. Parent, exactly, the situation. Okay. Um, not being able to finish school. I um started college. I did end um, I did get my high school diploma. Okay. I started college numerous of times, but I didn't finish because of the struggle with mm -hmm. being a um, single mother. Okay. Um, and then also, you know, I, I had numerous of jobs, but I just couldn't quite get the puzzle fit in the puzzle, you know, because I was still trying to, again, find myself. I knew what I always loved to do. I knew that I always loved to write. I knew that I always loved to act. I knew that I always loved to sing. But at the end of the day, because it was not incorporated in my life as a child I just didn't know where to start from so I just thought that I would just do what the world do and you know go ahead get a job and think that I would be happy and full of fulfillment and things like that and so I just ended up again like I said with the three children um I, my uh, my you know marriage ended 
of course, in the most craziest divorce <laughs> that it could ever be. And, um, you know, I went back home with my mother. Then I didn't have employment, didn't have a job, didn't have anything. And I just cried out to God and I said, God, what in the world? What is wrong? Why do I continue to, uh, you know, end up in situations like this? What happened to my marriage? Why do I just keep having children? Why, you know, and what I didn't tell you um, that I, I used to d not even date, but just tend to sparingly have sexual intercourse with, you know, different men. Again, trying to... Okay, so that, is that what made you a hoe? Yeah, well, hey, they, <laughs> were, you, were you selling yourself as yes, well? Yes, as well. Okay. And so... Because, I mean, we go through promiscuous times mm -hmm. in our lives. Mm -hmm. You're loving yourself again. It always comes back to that because now I'm in that place mm -hmm. of that... Mm -mm, you can't even have this. <laughs> yeah. I'm waiting on my husband. Yeah. But I was so, not there. No, well, so I, but it I, took me a long time to get there. Girl, it's 48. I was not there. Don't even there. try it. Don't, I, I, I was there. <laughs> girl, I, trust me, I understand your whole ism. Yes, yes. We all have been there in one point or another as males or females. females. The thing is... Is let's talk about mm -hmm. that for one moment, and then how did you get yourself to the point that you were not that anymore? Just being broken, busted. And but disgusted. when did when did you start that, and how did that start? I was, I was actually in Florida, um, and like I said, I was crying out to God, and I said, "Well, God, you know what is wrong with me, and I need you to show me me how you see me." And a lot of times when we ask God that question, we're not ready for the answer. Yes. And what he showed me was that, um, you know, that I was the way that I was due to that I never dealt with the molestation that I dealt with. Okay. And then I never dealt with um, my low esteem issues and different things like that. I never dealt with, and at that time it was skyrocketed to the point because at that moment, when I started my deliverance process, um, my father had was deceased too. So it was just crazy, you know. And so I asked God to show me, and he showed me my nasty, disgusting ways. He even showed me and proved that I also dealt with the generational curse of um, sexual um, deviation and different things like that. Was this somebody so, in your family? Yeah, my father, actually. My father. And so that is the preacher. Mm hmm. Yes. And that's why the book is so awesome, because the book Ooh. is not just an ordinary book. It's actually a testimony. It tells you script by script, blow by blow. I don't leave anything out. People say, well, how can you be a minister? How can you be a pastor's wife? And you're telling the story. Oh, well, but, but the Bible says you overcome by your testimony. Yeah, you got and to it's tell not, it. And, it, and it's point blank serious. Like you cannot pity pat with people's lives people are stuck in the rut that they are in because people don't want to be truthful people don't want to be honest about what they've been through yeah but i tell you today shakia sanders she is honest about everything that she go through all you gotta do is ask a question sometimes you don't even gotta ask i just go off on the women just tell you <laughs> yes yes so coming into your deliverance um which is wow that's a whole i guess spiritual trans transformation mm -hmm. because we always look at ourselves as human beings but we're really spiritual yes uh entities first mm -hmm. and the body is the vessel that's true for us to be here on earth with each other to be in 3d a lot of people don't get that but mm -hmm. i get it yes um so with your transformation was that almost like a withdrawal syndrome of crack Listen. or or heroin addict or you know what I'm saying? I tell everybody an addiction. It doesn't matter what it is. Well, alcoholism, whether it's with drugs, you can be addicted to lying. You can be addicted to being a thief. Yeah, I was addicted to sex. Okay, however you sliced it, diced it. That's what I was chasing after. Okay. And yes, it was a withdrawal like none other. Yes, I'm sitting up in the corner shaking and different things like wow. that talking to myself like you know no i need to call this number i need to go in my little black book or okay. i need to get that yeah you i personally really went through all of those issues and problems okay um but at the end of the day it really took prayer and it really took me to say listen i just need something different i need you god to really make me the way that you had already designed for me to be mm -hmm. no matter it, you know 
I have to realize that sometimes I can blame it on my molestation. I could blame it on my generational curses. I could blame it on every dude that, you know, dogged me out. I could do that, but I have to take some kind of of um responsibility. responsibility for myself it is about us it is about us mm -hmm. and our choices um that we make a lot of people want to blame others or other situations but really the situation that you're in is your situation, situation. and you either have to be the one to control it mm -hmm. or let it control you that's it you, yeah and at that time i decided that the situation was not going to control me yeah i was going to defeat and and annihilate the situation as a whole and I was going to now you know uh, be who I was supposed to be being an upstanding woman go back to school no matter what you know pitfalls situations mm -hmm. I you know ended up in I was going to do the right thing no matter what my family thought I was going to go and continue to be an actor I was going to write and you know even though I didn't know I was going to write my life story in right. my book, <laughs> but I was going to write and you know I was going to say I'm going to do what I needed to do t whatever it was by any means necessary I take that to the T by my Max, I will do anything by any means necessary to be able to have peace and to have mm -hmm. longevity in my life and to leave an inheritance even for my children yes. so that they know that no matter what, you can make it. You can be whatever you are designed to be. You can do that. We're going to go to a commercial break. Okay. Um, we don't have that much time in the show, but Al is going to probably like hook us up with a little okay. bit more time. You know what I'm saying? We're going to give him some hugs and kisses All right. to him. We're going to kiss you. <laughs> he married, so you know we can okay. we only do but <laughs> well, I'll give you a wig. <laughs> <Thumbs up. laughs> yeah. But we're going to go ahead and pay some bills and we'll be right back because right. I want to just ask you a few more questions okay. and spend some more time with you. All we'll right. be right back right after these messages.
go. Here we go. We are having so much fun in the studio yes. today. I mean, I'm just really <laughs> like loving the whole vibe. We're in season seven, episode one. So, like, you know, you and Nubian and um, D. Jones, I've, I've um, bought a special um, kind of um, content to start off our season. Okay. And when I booked y'all for this date, I knew that you were going to bless Tar TV to, to kick us off <laughs> for the new year. All right. So, um... Let's get back to your book real quick. Yes. First of all, tell everyone where they can find your book. You can find the book on my website if you want an autographed copy at www.womenofdeliverance.org. And you also can get it on any online chain that you could possibly even think of or Google. It yes. is on there. Lulu, Amazon, Kindle, Nook, Barnes & Nobles, all of that. Get and it? and uh, this is genius. Tell everyone where where you drove from to come here to I be with us. I drove from Anderson, South Carolina, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is really not that far, Mimi. Well, you know? considering it over an hour, that's all right. But, but it was genius, <laughs> girl. You because y'all know that's my genius. word. It was that's a my word movement. for twenty fourteen. Mm -hmm. Genius. Yes. Yes, indeed. And um, so you know your your readers. Your readers, what kind of like feedback do they give you regarding your book? I get crazy feedback from my book because my book reaches beyond walls of the church. Mm -hmm. I usually do my book signings and I do all of my promotions in like clubs and bars, you know, on the street. I might just go. You might find me in a whorehouse. You just might. Okay, you know? okay. And so, therefore, that's what I do. The church people, I'm not going to say they have not grasped it. Those that are in the church that really need it, who have been looking for realness, okay. oh, they eat it up. Okay. Because they need it. They need someone, like I said earlier, to be truthful with them. So, I, I get different raises about it of course yes you do get the church people as per se oh my god it's too much they're about to have a heart attack so i tell them go ahead have a heart attack already you know <laughs> it'll be all right right but um i get crazy reviews um that is needed all over the world and really when um when god told me to write the book i um i honestly fought with God literally saying no I'm not going to do it it mm. took me about two years to write it because mm. I said God I do not want my business out there like that right because he told me don't leave nothing out write it exactly how you interact you came with interaction with it so that readers will literally look even though everything is not about them but the book the words itself will turn into mirrors for the readers and I've gotten that where people mm. was like you know here in chapter 7 when you were you know in bed or you were or thinking about this or even thinking about suicide and going through different things like that I remember it brought back to my remembrance of what I went through and how I'm actually feeling now and now you know reading your second because it, the book is in two installments okay <laughs> just okay. to let you know that because the first one is called from Hoda housewife my testimony and the second one is called from Hoda housewife um deliverance okay. and so when they look at that and they look at the transformation and um they look at the deliverance book and they say well now I know how to go about doing this I just have to first just take the tip first step and acknowledge that something is wrong with me and then go you know throughout the process and give them hope so i get great reviews al let's run this last commercial real quick we'll be right back right after these messages Hopefully. 
me. From hoe <laughs> to housewife. From hoe to housewife. I love it. Thank the you. The testimony mm -hmm. and then the deliverance. Yes. Log on to sh sh www.womenofdeliverance.org. Again, www.womenofdeliverance.org. Where are you from? I'm from South Philadelphia, born and raised. South <laughs> Philly? <laughs> yes. Wow. I used to go over to Front Street. And oh, yeah. All Delaware that. Avenue. Yeah. Oh, yes. I used to be. Well, I was in Philly. I, I trained at Freedom Theater. Oh, I love Freedom Theater. Listen. Yeah. Freedom Theater. Have, I've done a lot of things with Freedom Theater as well. Okay. And I've done done um, some things with Rick Watson from Philadelphia, some yes. um, different plays and different things like that. Yes. We actually was just in last December, we were at the um, uh, 14th Street Playhouse. Yes. Yep. Doing um, doing a play. So, yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to have to cast you in some of my <laughs> siblings sitcom or something. Go ahead. I'll be, I would love it. Ah, love Y'all heard it. <laughs> Y'all heard it. Contract for you now. All right, listen, <laughs> listen, I sign it right now. <laughs> That's what's up. I'm loving that. Thank you so much. We got to get you Thank on you. to come back, and you're gonna be. Yeah, I was up. just um, telling newbie, and I want you to be part of our deliverance segment. Right. We need to be delivered all the time. We need to be aware um, of our bad ways and our good ways, so we can stay in order. That's it. Steve Moore. <coughs> yes, I want to say Happy New Year yes. to all of our fans who yes. carried us through into season three. Thank you. We love you. For Sibling Sitcom. Yeah. So, Sibling Sitcom, and stay with us. There's going to be fantastic things happening. The new word is what? Genius. 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 Yes. Genius. Yes. Yes. So place. we're in season seven for the Arts Reporter, and we're in season one for the sibling sitcom MimiJohnson.net. What's up, girl? What's going on? Yeah, please? say something to the audience. Thank you. I appreciate all your love and support. My name is Nashley Nubian. Mm -hmm. um, please contact me. Give me your feedback. If you love what I do, post it on my wall. If you hate it, inbox. Me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, Thank you. Yeah. That's that as real as it can get. That was Genius. Don't you be yeah. don't you be posting okay. no negativity on my wall, right? <laughs> you will get deleted and blocked or That's something. A good idea. What, yeah. What's going on, y'all? Uh, first of all, I want to just say thanks to the other artists mm -hmm. that was up here tonight. I uh, really been blessed. I really got a word from both of these other artists tonight. Um, and I forgot to mention in my song because I was so caught up in everything. But okay. major shout outs to Mark Squared. Yes. Mimi Johnson dot net. Thank yes. you, girl, for having me on the show. You finally. <laughs> finally. I made it to Tar TV, baby. <laughs> Tar TV. It was, it was genius. <laughs> yeah. Major shout out to, uh, to Mark Squared, though. Make sure y'all yes. check out Fame 15. Yes. January 29th. We're we going to hit YouTube and we're going to hit Comcast 25 if you're in the cab. Mm -hmm. I don't know why that's only in the cab. No, nah, you know, well, actually. It's whatever. Yeah, if you log on to. Y'all can watch it on Comcast, mm -hmm. but uh, we'll yes. be on YouTube. We're YouTube, so which is worldwide, and my sure my fame that, fifteen, yeah. my, my fame, fame fifteen. And uh, mm -hmm. y'all check out the album Swag Soul. I'm D Jones. Yeah, there and, uh, you go. Appreciate y'all right. one more time for checking me out, man. Yeah, God bless and happy New Year. And y'all check out Woman the CD. That's my CD, R&B yeah. Soul Sensation. Um, and just uh, you'll see, you y'all know. I'm I'm I do everything. Mm -hmm. I do everything. I'm a TV you producer. Are listen, you are the I, triple threat, quadruple, <laughs> single, queen, <laughs> 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 the threat. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Coming soon, very soon. I've been procrastinating about this. Yeah. Coming soon, with the more photography website is under construction. Oh, good. Enjoy the work. You'll see a lot of her. Yes. My man D. Jones. Yes. Everything I've done. And That's I'll tell you, 2014, the prices are getting better. Yeah. Right. 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 Good hot chicken. Mm. Ah, there we go. <laughs> well, thank you so much. You're logged on to MimiJohnson.net, the arts reporter, your arts reporter, where we focus on arts, entertainment, entrepreneurs, and inspirational life stories. Every Wednesday, it goes down right here at MimiJohnson.net at 7 p.m. Shout out if you want your own TV show, ILikeItLive.com. Contact Al Burroughs. And on three, we're going to say tartar. One, two, three. Tartar! tartar. Thank you.